Thank you very much for joining me on the last session of the day. And uh, I hope all of you is still awake <laughs> to enjoy the session. And uh, this session is about top 10 key performance. There is a lot of techniques and performance techniques we can use, and we have. But this is the most top 10 I always put in mind, in my mind, when I develop front-end engineering or back-end and talking to my front-end engineers or mobile developers especially also, uh, doing hyper solution or web mobile solutions. Uh, it's these top 10 key, there is another aspects that we can consider, but this is the most keys that reduce the amount of processing on the back end and front end at the same time, saving data. Saving data because we are working now, most of the application running on cloud. Cloud, you always get the cost based on how much data transfer and processing power. So before on-prem, we don't have these problems because we just add RAMs, we do consumptions, and all of these things is on-premise in my company, local data center. Now we are running on cloud, and we have to take care of this into consideration. And as also part of saving the energy and efficiency of the power, because this is something costly. Because whenever you consume, means the scalability. Scalability means another instance, means money. It's always money-driven, and also you need to save cost. So uh, my name is Mohammed Taman, and I'm working, I'm originally from Egypt, but I just since one year and a half, I moved to Serbia, I'm living in Belgrade. I worked with many, many company before 10 years, I was working for Google and Oracle, then I start to work for different companies like now I'm enterprise architect working as a consultant. I have my own company in Serbia, but so there is some involved mainly consulting like architecture, coding, training, because I'm Java champion and GCP member and Oracle Groundbreaker. So I'm involved heavily in GDK stuff and Java EE, which is Jakarta EE now. And I'm really doing Spring also. Recently, it's a fantastic framework too. It's a framework, it's not different technology because this is one of the questions I get asked. If I don't, it's just another stuff behind Java EE. No, it's just a framework, how they make the original specification and just doing framework, which is make it easy for you to develop web application. So this is really what about me, as I told you. Uh, I wrote many books, and especially for JDK and uh, JavaFX. And this is my next book I'm working on, Secrets of Java Champion. And also I have some training on LinkedIn Pruler site, LinkedIn Learning and Pruler site. I'm doing a lot of articles for MVQ, Oracle, and IBM developers. So whenever, just easy to catch everything, search for my name on Google, and everything will come to you. All my projects and involvement is on my GitHub. Even this pre presentation is on GitHub. So you can take a picture, and I will get back by the end of, uh, you are for sure welcome to connect me. I'm tweeting so much. I'm living on Twitter. And uh, also email is available, Facebook. Just, if you don't bother, search my name. You will get everything. So let's start. So how many of you is back-end developer? That's good. Front-end engineering? And the others? <laughs> Mobile? Mobile development? OK, that's great. So we have usually something like this. And this is normal interface for any application. If I'm, I'm talking not about native mobile, I'm talking about mobile web interface and hybrid. Hybrid means I'm doing JavaScript, CSS, using whenever the framework is, because it's finally translated to this. Or trying to have an SDK to translate it to native, but there is a part which is HTML, JavaScript, JavaScript, and CSS. So this is what we are going to speak about. Before, from like four years, we used Cordova to do this. And now, most of the frameworks using from the ground Cordova, and they have their own, like React, like uh, Neon, and all of these have their own SDK. Just take your text, trying to create a native wrapper, and they include your CSS. So you don't have to be 
If you would like to go to the market quickly, you don't have to be specifically Android, iOS, and mobile specific developer knowing the language. If you are a web developer, you can create a mobile application in just two weeks with one of the uh, tutorials from Proler site or whatever it is, and you will become normally productive, especially if you have the skills of HTML, and HTML5 provide a lot of things for us to work with mobile and browsers. So the problem here, we normally get this UI contacted to the server. Server send us the UI. They have the links and everything, so there is nothing new. But there is a problem sometimes we face. And I found it when I was consulting teams and working with some teams when they do this. They have this kind of problem, which is trying to do this. This is just a small subset of how it, much it takes and also tie it you to the back end who is creating for you the front end. So the problem here is we are just calling the back end and the back end just sent for you the whole content. It's like you are using GSF, you are using whatever it is, it just, you tag it, you call the server, server translate all of this, create an HTML and send it to you every time. This is take a lot of much time of processing on your mobile device, especially, or the, uh, the, the, the laptop or whatever it you use, because it involves a lot of insertion in the DOM. And we will see why it is a big problem when we deal with DOM insertion, removing, updating. So what to do in such a case? Don't ever, never generate UI on server side. We have separation. You are a front end, you're using AngularJS, you only contact the back end only for getting data. Back end is just sending data, no part of UI. So what I have to do, there is a lot of frameworks already exist there like Ang Angular, you have React, you have a lot of front end engineers that also they are uh, web enabled as a view. They are customized to show you on the normal desktop browser and also whenever you have this, the scaling for the screen, it's adapted to be mobile-like uh, website. I'm getting from the 10, 10 means least, but it affects your idea. Then the number one and two, this is the most consumption power takes. So, and most of them, not just at the power, it's also user experience. Because if you are con uh, uh, requesting for the back end and waiting, just network is a big problem. We're trying to avoid always contacting any back end because of the network. Sometimes happens delay, a lot of requests, but you're stuck to a page, for example, long processing, and because you are waiting. I don't know what you are doing. Something like Facebook and Twitter and this stuff, you just you request new information, you'll find the page is already exists, showing some like animation image with all the content just updated. So we are going to talk next. So what to do is fast is create always the UI and the JavaScript on the server and, and the client side. Who's doing this for us now is much easier is frameworks mainly. Because you are just waiting, you are communicating in the back end using REST API, getting data update the view. And also any insertion or removal from the DOM, don't wait for the back end just to give even portion of the page. No, 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 do it in your front end based on the status or the data you get. Or, and always, I always encourage people to use single page architecture. Do you know what is SPA? Single page? Yes. Why? Because it's only loaded once, cached, and we have this kind of sections or div, which is translated into page. So it's loaded once, whenever you move from page to page, it just hide and show, hide and show, but it's already loaded. Don't create separate files because whenever you load a file means insertion and the DOM. I'm talking about uh, updating, insertion, deleting from the DOM. So what is the problem in this? We will see it because it's very harmful. Uh, I just have talked about this network access. As much as you can, try to avoid network access. So what to do? I have to contact the back end. So uh, there is a lot of solutions when it comes, for example, something like this. i getting a lot of information about static data or your business have a lot of static data or even data does not change for a long period. 
There is a way to cache it locally in the browser. Not even using cache, like uh, caching mechanisms or service. No, 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 don't use it. You can use local cache. HTML5 provide for you local storage, provide for you files, provide for you indexed DB locally in the browser. And whatever the size you decide, you can put all the data and load it from it. It works for mobile and browsers. So you can easily, I did this many times for all the static data, and when it comes to your application loading, load the data from your local cache. And you can have a mechanism just to update. Even you avoid it to have cache server to just put data and call because it's network component and there is an access. So avoid network access for sure. I can use local sto storages, databases, inside the, because local storage, we have session storage and normally local. For database, we have locally indexed DB, which is document based, and we have, uh, uh, it's called local storage, which is normal MySQL uh, database. Look, uh, MySQL, now we have indexed DB, it, and another one which is local, it's called local storage, which is uh, SQLite database. So also sometimes I will get cache dynamic data, try to cache it. N now I don't have any option, it's dynamic. Dynamic means it's based on the request, it changes. So I have to cache it in, in local separate cache. This way, um, yes, I will create a cache and I will st stop not contacting direct the back end. And sometimes don't do it like this and don't wait. You can, more architecture wise, you can just create your adapter and from inside your adapter, you can change. It could be in-memory cache, it could be server cache, it could be local cache. So in front end, you don't change. You change the adapter, and the way that you call the data from the cache never change. So it's always architecture-wise. Try not explicitly to identify is it from backend or in-memory or whatever it is. Just create a wrapper around the cache, and internally, whenever you change, that's it. The front end engineer will never change the way he talks, because I'm waiting from get items, and when it's done, I get the data, I will view it. So another trick, also, most of the things, maybe you, you know it, how to limit also the result height. It's very important. We mostly for mobile application, and even if you have laptop and very processing power, this comes to data bandwidth. It's network consumption of the data. Why you are transferring data is not needed. Why? Because if you are working on 3G and providing all the data that customer does not see, you will consume his bundle. A lot of consumption. Why? We need to save his, not just the power, his data consumption. So you know that your application, based on the size of the screen, you will get five results. Just return five results. If he needs, he will scroll or doing search or pagination. And next time you have the call, because mostly when we do search, we stick to the first page. Don't return the old data. When you access the link, go to get the data or just return the relevant data for that. This is another thing that you have also to limit the size of the width of the data. Means, you know, if I'm an employee and I'm showing on the page like five properties, why to return for me like 20 properties or 50 properties? Uh, just in case, because you would like to use it in the future, and we are working for, for, for the future. Uh, when it comes to the future, just use a proper one to provide. Don't provide all the data, because it will turn that we are consuming too much data, and we are, we are waiting for translating all of this to its time consumption, because we are waiting and handling and memory consumption and also bandwidth. So it's very important, local caching, dynamic data, we use servers for this and for content and also try to always reduce the, the, the height and the width of the data. So yes, this is another problem category. So what do you think about here? Why it's, it's a problem and also UX, it's, it's UX bad experience. If I'm trying to load the page, and I'm waiting for something. I'm waiting for the data to view my page. So you're stuck in not even
just it's uh, sometimes experience it's white page and I would go out from your application I will start to run it again I will go out I start to run it again how to solve this problem I told you about it just This is, but but SPI will not solve the data side because you are waiting for the data to coming, but it takes long time to come. So you can, yes, exactly. This is one of things, and also show, show the view. Don't wait for the data. Never. Don't wait for the data. Depend on the data. When it comes, I will show. What if he is working in in some network and it's 2G? He will wait for a long time. No, no. Show him as a progress. If you are you opening your Facebook, if it's not cached the post and you're just doing refresh, he will show you that your face, faceless, it's like, but it's like the post and everything just waiting for its waving image that there is something running for data, but the content is working. So it will give you a very good experience for your user experience, UX. So we have to display the view first, then when it comes to the data, I just inject it to the places. And, but at least I took the time to draw the, the, the DOM, and I'm just going to subset small portion of the data, which has become more faster, instead of drawing all the page or pages because we're using single page architecture. And sometimes you have user experience just shows some nice stuff for user. He will get rid of waiting for a long time if he sees something really cool. This is important also. This is very slow when it comes on mobiles. And consumption of the power very high means battery drain. And it will kill everything. What the problem of this if I am using library and using their animation stuff? like JavaScript animation. Exactly, because it's totally mathematical application, and any programming language goes to CPU to be translated and run, means more consumption. And this is a very bad idea. So what if I would like to do translation, movement, rotation, all of this? I, I have to do it with JavaScript normally, because we have this, no, HTML5, you know, I think all of this, CSS specifically, version 3, bring you 3D transformations. And all this 3D transformation runs on GPU. So you separated your application, either it's because this is why when we create a gaming using Canvas and using all the CSS transitions, we creating oh, using the CSS we, to create the games and any interactive, you don't feel that there is the browser is stuck. The browser is waiting for processing because I run all of this in GPU and my normal processing for the DOM and normal uh, small subset of calculations run on CPU. And the CPU is running the whole operating system, not just your application. So if you are affecting, you will find your all mobile services is, you know, stuck and not performing well. So using CSS, how to use it? Something like this. Did you see this page? Uh, this is like concept of single page architecture. If I'm doing like this is come right. So it's like show and hide. Now this is first slide, this is second slide, this is going here. I'm just trying to shuffle. So this is the concept of single page architecture, how it works, because it loads all of them, but just in the view, they show how it works. So this is, could be implemented like this. But this is very slow, because this is normal CSS. So we can move right, down. Uh, we can have this transform fading, you know, fade out, fade in, page transitions mostly, inbox, outbox. All this could be done normally using JavaScript, but it's very harmful. And based on the architecture of the mobile application or your desktop, if it's old, it will not support it. It's, uh, you know, it's a slow down movement and you feel bad user experience. This could be translated easily using CSS3, using the functions. These functions directly in, uh, 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 how to can say directly, directed to run directly on GPU. GPU is intended and created to processing 
any graphical and complex mathematics. This is why we use it for Bitcoin mining. CPU, whenever it is a PGA, or it, it's still uh, a, a low resource for complex processing. Just all the GPU is intended to do mathematical calculation very efficiently because it's just doing this. It doesn't handle multi-threading, multi-processing, registers, and for variables and do this like the just processing and give you the result. So also sometimes when we implement native, you will find that the native scroll, I need to feel that native because if you use normal HTML, uh, Scrolling in your content, it's it's either a sluggish, or you know it's it it has a bad experience. If you would like to feel the native, uh, to instruct your browser to use the native scrolling, you can inject this just talk, uh, this kind of CSS, and it's normally you will have the native colors and smoothness of the content that you'll need, either browser or mobile. It applies. This is another problem, but on Android. When you use Hypert or mobile web, what is the problem here? This could be wrapped and run on tablets, and you can, because if I click here, you will see that I'm not running on mobile, so you will not feel. The problem is, I just, you, when you click on it, you will get here like how many seconds it consumed to understand is it tab or double tab. This is problem Android has when you run your application on browser. Because whenever you create and wrap it using Cordova or, or Reactive, it's loading from inside uh, the Chrome uh, browser render engine to render your HTML page from inside your application. So this is the default engine. So what happens, the, Java, uh, the, the browser's engine don't know are you experienced double tab or one tab. So they have to wait 300 milliseconds to decide. So they don't know. So even if you double tab, they will wait. But they register do double tab, so they know based on the double taps, I will do this action. It's a single, it's three milliseconds. Sometimes you have an application and you click back it waits for 300 milliseconds and get the page. Why you, do you wait like this? What is the problem is that there is nothing happens, but it just the three milliseconds, 300 milliseconds. So avoid clicks event. This is for Android. It, it doesn't have any problem with iOS. It's only for Android and running Chrome. So this is when I implement the solution. When you click, it get register immediately based on your click or double click. Since you finished in, 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 in the time frame, it will register and run, so you don't experience this. There is a, f like, this library, you just, you can go to the, the website and just they provide you a couple of sentences how to integrate it inside your application and it will do everything for you behind the scene and to avoid the 300 milliseconds. Uh, when I don't have to use it, if you know that you are running Chrome 32 version and above and using this kind of metadata tag like this, initially it will be avoided and taken care of this. So you don't have to use the library because it's solved it on this. And also you can use for all versions, for all versions of Android, even the old one and new one, you can use user scale no, it will solve the problem, but you will have accessibility issue. You have to be aware of, because it will disable pinch zooming if you are uh, for link or something. When you pinch for zooming, it will be disabled. But for accessibility people, it's very important. So you have to be aware of this. Then if you don't need, use the library to solve it and don't disable this. If you are not aware, don't care about this, just you can use it. It will be solved with an old problem, and you don't have to use the library. Another kind of big issue is images. Why something like this is slow? It's just icons. It's nothing. And all our applications is lovely content, and we have logo, we have icons everywhere, and it gives you a very good experience and lovely experience. 
So the main problem is it's this is one thing, exactly. We don't count the order, how they appear on the screen. And the screen can be sized because we don't know the size of the images. So it's just kind of a plot, you know, we try and draw the images of our own This is one, this is exactly true, and we can avoid it by, the, by introducing sizes, but we are not going to do this, because we have to bring, to get exact size of this. The parallel request, it's very a lot of requests just to get some images, but imagine that your application is business application. They have for everything like image just to call. And every time, you would bring all of these data again. What if you update it? What if you trying to just update it? The page means it will contact to try to get all of this. And comparing with the cache, if you have this image or not, and you have to specify like expiry for, you have to handle a lot of things. and. It's not just this, we are going to speak about images. There is a lot of problem I've seen from graphic designers and user front -end engineering designers that they don't know about how it, it works and they introduce really slow response while it's not that the request and response, they are working perfect, but it's because it's data consumption. So optimize your images. So we can use, for sure, all of you know this spreadsheet. It's just one image containing all my uh, icons. So when I request, I will request only one image. It will come to my front end, and it will be cached. But how I can get each image? Because it's finally, this is one image, actually. And by the position. So with a small CSS, like this, we can reference each one. It just, you, uh, please show me this 40 by 40 icon starting from this position to this position. It's like the first for, if I would like to, I'm saying, okay, this is my image at the whole, and the width of the height, I would like to control always 40, 40. This is the size of my icon. And I just say, based on each class, how to move from where to where. Then based on this, it will move from here. Starting from 0, 0 means, and with width and height 14, it will take first icon. Moving just 24 pixels, which is 14. And just, you are moving X and Y, so you're getting image. But it's faster access, and only one request. And whenever you have a change for colors, for example, it's one image, I will send it to the customer, and it will be cached. So it's very important to do something like this, and it doesn't cost. Also very important, use the right image size. This is one of the biggest problem I, I always see when I, why it takes, because when we analyze the network, it's consumed a lot of data. Because you use the same one gig, uh, one mega, for example, or 10 mega image that is just few view for the customer, the full car to show the details, the same like you use it for search. So when you search for 10 items, you get the same image because you don't need to create a different version with reduced size. But I don't see, I'm just, this is Honda, this is Mazda, this is this. I, don't, I didn't yet look for the details. When I access the data, bring me the bigger version, like Amazon. When you do search in Amazon, it just give you to see if this is the product I'm looking for or not. Oh, can I see the more details about this? Okay, click the link. And even you have different version, and you, when you zoom it, you will see that it, it will load for you. So it's differently, different version from the same image. Yes, because I would like to not consume a lot of data and request you with the data in faster way. Because if I'm waiting for, we have 10 results, by each image is 10, how much it is it? Just for one request, every next, and then you have this. But if you reduce to 1K, you have 10K. How much faster it is? It's much faster than the first one. So scaling image is very important because, yes, you can scale it with some height to be shorter, but you didn't scale and reduce the image size. I don't care for it now. <laughs> uh, hosting image, for sure, for you, if your user experience, if you have images, you need always to show your image, scale, uh, put it on content management system, always avoid 404. What does it mean? Sometimes you show, you will get X, 
and it's user experience bad, so you can show like one default image. Whenever there is no uh, image, it will be shown instead of the original one until you fix the problem, but it will give experience something missing, or at least I'm trying to get data from the back end. But it will never see that where is the data is, y, x. It's like it doesn't load. I will try to request you again and again to just reload it. It's a different experience. You avoiding requests to your backend. And you can use this script to just put it and it will use, okay, if there is no on error, if there is no image, just subscribe by the source substitute by no pick BNG and it will work. Five cent fix and it will make your user experience very happy, it should be. Another th thing it's we love to have shadow gradient. We can use images, but try to minimize using shadow gradients, alignment, and uh, border radius. Why? Can you imagine why? We, we inherently saying don't insert in the DOM too much. Don't update, don't wait for the back end to send you the data. Try to limit the tweaking in, 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 in your DOM. Trying to not use all of this kind. Okay, how can I need shadow? It's give user experience. Uh, you can use image. It's very easy and by, by just background you can scale it and up just a small one and you can play with this. CSS is here for this. And for border radius you can have it because you can have image showing this or small border radius, you can have it with image, it's much better than this. Why? Any change in these properties means revalidate the whole HTML page. Means recreate from the beginning. Validation means recreate and whenever you create, you validate. Alignment, when you change alignment, definitely you are validating the whole page which is user experience and time to processing. If your page is single page and contain a lot of elements, each of these need to be validated and strictly. So what if we have multi-language support? Every time the performance, you have to decide when you need security over performance. Sometimes we say, I need this to be secured. It would be very slow in this way, uh, but I need it to be secured. You can't Take, consider if I have multiple pages, yes, I have another page or just translating the content once, but don't do it frequently, don't mix, don't use alignment so much. When I ask for this, you just transfer it and that's it. Translate it to the different language. This is the bigger problem, reflow. I spoke about all of tweaking, reducing because of reflow. Reflow, do you hear about this concept before? Uh, that's uh, no, intentional availability in the user render of all the page uh, by any kind of a size change of the element or whatever happens. Uh, we insist that browser refresh the page uh, to, can configure it multiple times, so 10 times or hundreds. Exactly. It, this is the way when we access the DOM for updating UI, for changing element. Uh, properties for whenever any kind of accessing the DOM means refresh, refresh and validate, even if you change a small area. And now you, we are using like Ajax for just updating portion. How this is very important to not just we have to take care of this, especially in mobile, because refresh means it will be sluggish view and also taking a lot of processing power because you're trying to render the page, and especially sometimes in response. How I can see this? In your browser, you have something in, in the settings called frame per second. And you can say, okay, highlight the area that have a lot of refresh. So you will know, you will have a green rectangle about the, what happens, and you have red rectangles. Red rectangles means you have too much accessing for this area. You have to reduce it. It's an area that slow down your view or even the request to be rendered or showing your page. The other one, it's just a green, you are safe. So you can test because normally we can test all the mobile interface from, uh, uh, from your normal browser 
for web. And if you run it inside the mobile, you can also set these flags in your emulator to see the frame per seconds, how it works, and reflow. I will show it to you. So what is the point that we have taken into consideration in order to avoid, for sure, reduce the number of DOM elements? Just try to use the elements that you need to show and use to compose your UI. Because sometimes when we use like third-party API tools to generate our UI, they generate a lot of spam inside devs to just because you changed the color, they create a spam for the colors. Too much element inside your DOM means too much time to render all of this. Your tree is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So whenever you reduce, even it's, if it's one element, it's very important. Minimize access to the DOM means don't just force to refresh all, just if you have part, we will see. To get subset of that part, make all the changes offline and batch it again. We will see how. Another thing, update offline, as I told you. Avoid tweaking layout using JavaScript, like animation and this stuff, because it's killing, not just your processing drain, the, the, the flow, and blocking the other activities. So you will get a very bad experience and slow performance. Batch your DOM changes, especially when updating styles. How to do this? It's very easy. Sometimes I see code like this. So what is the problem here? Why? Because first, I'm getting the header, the back button, and I'm registering the event. Then, and it finished, and it will update the DOM. Then, again, please, access to set the color. Then it finished. Then again, then again means how many just to update one button with just the properties. I hit the DOM four times, mean four reflows, means four refreshes. You didn't see this, but you will see it if there is too much. You will see there is like a refresh behind that. It's like the, the UI disappear and appear frequently, especially in the devices that have a lot of load on the processing power. <clears throat> we could do something like this. Then we get the button offline, starting to, to do it. But OK, and put the CSS and CSS and attribute and that's it at the end. But it's not that much faster. But it's, it's much better than the first one. So maybe someone will tell me, OK, I can do this. It's just one call. So what is the problem here? It doesn't mean that you chain it. means it's one call. It's just one method, another one, because this is have to finish and return. This is has to finish and return. This has to finish. So it means five screen refreshes because you try to be more intelligent to do it like chain. Chain for easy syntax to write. To say that, yes, I'm applying all of this just for this one, and that's it. But it doesn't mean that you separated the functionality from uh, the ground. So how to do this? It's much better to do it in one call, updating the whole CSS. So this is one, just one, not just jQuery, whenever it is. More architecture-wise, concise maintainability-wise, you can do it like this. Why? Because you just use the class, and whenever you have even future changes, or whenever you would like to change colors, add more properties, change another, anything, just creating CSSs for themes for your application, just you can add it on the CSS and it will be applied. And the CSS applied once. Whenever you grow up, all you introduce more element, reduce it, whenever it is maintainability-wise. For your front-end engineer, you will not care about it. Your view is separated from the tweaking of the view. It, this is the same like this, but this is more maintainable, clean, and it allows you to add more and more functionality and color and design than the first one. Do you need really that framework? Sometimes we love to use frameworks. AngularJS is fantastic. And the first version of AngularJS, they just, when, and most of the frameworks you run, they load a lot of library and a lot of stuff, but uh, I am just using Angular because I love the UI part. What about the other processing and services and message libraries? Uh, I already included all of this. 
So you like the UI, go just take the UI and use it because you will have a lot of this library which is you don't use, load it into the memory, accessing the DOM, and you don't need to, you don't worry about it, then you will introduce a very problem in pr programmatic uh, performance of your application. So you have to consider, really do you need it? Study characteristic of the, your framework. This, not just for JavaScript, for back-end developers. Whenever you choose library, you have to choose it based on very most common points. First, the support, how it's frequently updated, and the security patches, how it's fre frequently uh, patched. This way you can rely on the, uh, on the framework or library or whatever it is. Faster deployment. Sometimes, yes, we finished our application, we would like to deploy it. And we, most of us, using containers to do this, either front-end or back-end. One of the most tweaks, and there is a lot of tweaks for Docker image to tweak, but the most common it is created is how to make it faster deployment. You don't have to create the whole image, especially if it's big. This is for back-end and front-end, by the way. It doesn't matter. This is just one way I found that is very important because we are working with DevOps and we need our fixes really to be on uh, production as quick as much as it can. So when you do the, the build on Jenkins until you deploy it and you pull the new image, you don't have to pull the whole image, which is maybe sometimes bigger than gig or even less. I need just the tweak, which is my part of application 4K. How to do this? Try to make best use of layers. How I maintain the layer? Each command inside the Docker file is translated into layer. Sometimes people combine many commands inside the one. It will be one layer. Updating. So, for example, how, how many of you are doing Spring Boot? Okay, you can know this when you create a jar. It will contain all the libraries that you use. So your application is 10K, and using the jars, dependencies, it will be 100 and something. Imagine that every time you push this with microservices around you, you just pushing this part, which is even for the layers. So what to do in this situation? Take the library, put it in one layer, copy all the library for one layer, which is not changed frequently until you change the dependency version, and just your application jar separately take it, which is the original one. This way, you maintain the bigger layer is always static and will never build, and just you build this small thin layer which is, are going also to be updated. And you can use this layer is common between all your microservices. So there is a lot of kind of a way how you can save bandwidth, faster deployment, and how to do it. <clears throat> for sure, and the most is testing your application because finally you, you did all the tweaks, you did all the fantastic job, but you will never know this performance works really good or not until you test. So testing, I told you before, you told about the network, accessing everything so you can monitor how many, who's blocking what, and just from your browser, browser and you have resources, network source, and timeline profile. You can profile and see the memory consumptions and the CPU consumptions. And network, show you the network. And also, there is another one in the settings. Here, when you access the general, you can see the rendering, which is, I told you about, reflow. You can just enable show paint rectangles. Where is the reflow happens in my screen, which is part element I'm accessing to solve it. And just show frame per second meter, how I'm, is my frame per second for translation and transmission is working good or just there is a slowdown or something like this. You can also on, on Safari and most of the browser, you can hook inside your application uh, if you are running you, from your mobile. So you can hook inside and see all the, what happens on the console and these kind of stuff and also when it comes to simulator and emulators. It's very important when I test. For real functionality, it doesn't matter if you are running on simulator or emulators. Do you know what is the difference between both, simulator and emulator? 
I will continue and I will answer at the end so you can figure out the solution, uh, the difference between us. And when it comes to the real performance, try to test on real devices as much as you can. Because the real devices using the real configuration and hardware will show you really your application, how it behaves on real devices. For functionality, I would like just to click and button. I get the response and show the, uh, the response and that's it. I don't care about even if it's slower. Functionality could be tested very well on simulators or emulators. But on real testing for performance, you have to, as much as you can, test on real devices. The most iOS use simulators, Android using emulators. iOS because I was running on the same architecture of the mobile. My iPhone had the same architecture as a hardware and, and buses and everything and translation and architecture is the same like my Mac. So they don't have to emulate the environment. It's like Java virtual machine. You get different virtual machines to just different operating systems and architecture. On Mac, they are the same. Same OS, same architecture, so it's just simulation environment for your application to run inside. When it comes to Android, it's totally different because Android is multi-operating system, but you don't know which architecture it is. At the first beginning, it translates the bytecode to something native, which is, takes so much time. This is why you feel that your emulator is very slow. There, there is a lot, Intel provided a lot of uh, HMAX or something, HIMAX, some, something called like this. I always forget the name because it's not something that it's good to pronounce, so I forget. But it's very easy to find how to speed up the emulator, you'll find the solution directly. You just set up and it helps you to run this emulator more faster in different platforms. So this is the difference between emulation of the environment. I'm emulating for you the Android environment, and that's it. Number zero, as a programmers, this is really, I found, some interesting top optimization for code specifically. And this is the final piece. So this kind of stuff is very slow. And if you have it in your, whatever, JavaScript or any language, try as much as you can to avoid doing calculation inside the for loop. Try to make it constant as much as you can. Pre-calculate it and you compare the pre-calculated because whenever you have for loop and doing calculation every time, it will slow down your processing power and take much time than just normal. So try to avoid any kind of doing calculation inside for loop. This is something definitely slow. And I, I know that most of you great developers and know it. Why here is problem? Because if you just have a slight lock, you can just translate it to this. Try to avoid repeated expressions because you are wasting cycles. It's the same expression. So this is only why I have to introduce it here and here. It's only once and I'm going to calculate at the same time. I don't have to do it like this. It's the same. So try to avoid repeated uh, expressions means less CPU cycles. One line of optimization, it costs. Try to use if else, then structure wisely. So you profile your code. So you see that yes, this line or branch of if else is most visited one, put it at the beginning. And from the likely, visited to least visited. This is how it is will work with your company. Whenever it's the request you have like 80% or uh, like 60%, this branch is visited more, put it at the beginning. So you don't have to visit all the branches until you go to your uh, FLS branch. So what else optimization I can do? I'll try to convert it. I would come to this point. I can convert it to switch case. Here, if you are using JavaScript, you don't have this kind of hash map. But sometimes I would like to index data and faster access if I have a lot of data. In memory cache, for example, I implemented in my front end memory cache. But I'm using memory cache, for example, like I, I have to have like hash map like key value. But you don't have this in, in JavaScript. So you can do it like this. You create an object normally, and you have the key 
choose the key you'd like. I choose the name here, and here is the object. And just one function, trying to access the index by the key. And that's it. So instead of you are looping on the content of the, the, the JSON, to get the proper one, which is take much time, you harness this by indexing using in JavaScript. For sure, in our languages, normally we have hash map and this kind of data structure. So yes, it's easy. But in JavaScript, you will not find it. But this is how we can. For sure, if I can use switch case and avoid if uh, else case, yes, try to convert it. Because switch case is much, much, much faster than uh, if else. Because it's the other one, if else, is just comparison based. So you have to evaluate. Switch is just constant based. You say, okay, based on the value, I have one, two, three, four, five. So this kind of case is, is already constant. So it's faster access. Like, yes, I know where is the index is. I'm going to get the value, return it to you. If else, I have to compare until I go to you. If you can't, try to structure it well. Try to use the correct data collection. It's very important. If your application involves a lot of data, try to use hash set, tree set, whatever it is, business, study the business. If I need the data came always ordered, tree set. Don't use array list, for example. That's normally, but I need it ordered. Whenever study, if you know really very good the characteristic of free data collection, this is one of the great performance tuning that everybody don't take care of. Do you know how to, uh, what is the function? Yes, array list, trees, maps, set, list, what is, arrays. Yes, we know, but why there is a lot of white collections? Why there is a queue? Why there is some characteristic? When I use this, when I have a lot, a lot of data, when I use, when I have a lot of searches, you now I can use different one because it's optimized for insertion of the data more than the search. You just, if you know that this, this is the great performance to uning is in collection. Also, APIs and algorithms, study the characteristics, try to differentiate between this. And this way, you can really optimize all your performance characteristics. This is always very important. This is the most top, I can say, 12 point. And I just updated. Uh, this is how we, we say that don't generate the UI on the server. Try to avoid it as much as you can. Limit network access as much as you can. Whenever you cache, it's very good for you. And don't wait for the data to display UI. We have a lot of alternative mechanisms. We're using hardware acceleration to speed up our animations and all the user experience using CSS3, Transition API, and Transformation API. We can, in, in Android, to avoid the 300 click on different browsers, and we have uh, solution for this, optimize images, very big topic. I can't touch a lot of stuff here because we can encode even the image inside the CSS. Don't translate it, transfer it from. You can, for small images, you can encode it to base 46 and it will be served for you inside one CSS and you can access it will be translated for you normally and this, instead of accessing the image from the server. So you avoid one request and put it in CSS, so you have all the images and icon inside CSS. Most of the frameworks, by the way, doing this. Uh, don't you have to think really about your framework that you use, which parts? There is a lot of frameworks just for UI and enhancement and this stuff. Make sure to optimize your UI, avoid reflow, because most of the uh, other stuff for reflow. Test your data. Try to use optimization for your code. Maybe this just small stuff that I give it to you, but this is the most affecting my code and branches, which is one of them, if else structure. This is one of the code coverage really improve the performance. And some other stuff which is small, but this is really take a huge amount of optimization and using switch cases. So any questions? SVG, as I told you, you can use it inside CSS. Okay. 
from CSS and you can access it. Or even for GBG or else, or BNG, you can encode it inside CSS. This way, I don't have to access all the images. I can have CSS encoding images and another one just inherit all these images to show it in your page. So you don't have even to request one spirit or something like this. And for mobile applications, uh, compression, is it useful or it hits CPU? Based like on your right size now? of data. Yeah, I mean, um, but if we have um, a text data, just a JSON, mm -hmm. it's pretty big. So um, should I really think about uh, the CPU? Yeah, about the CPU uh, effort for that, or it's okay, so it goes pretty fast with minimum battery waste. Nowadays, most of the CPU is very fast, but it means memory to uncompress. And but battery. This is, mm -hmm. And battery. And? A battery. Battery. Just resource of mobile device, battery resource. Uh-huh, that's it. And also, there is big pro we don't experience this in mobile, because we don't process a lot of huge data on mobile because just we, we're trying to serve you, find a lot of applications, trying to limit most of the functionality that need a lot of consumption. So you don't have this. You have this on your normal browsers as an image if you would like to send huge data or from service to service for processing. Yes, you have to consider the compression for sure. But the uh, mobile application, you will not have this kind of one big JSON to show a lot of stuff or to do some processing power on, on that device. Um, well, then my, my next question regarding the amount of data. So we plan to use solutions kind of AG Grid. It's mm -hmm. pretty powerful. It allows us to analyze data on a client. So it should good, work good enough. So it can consume like a pretty big amount of data. So, and you mentioned that we should use limiting so it's not our case, right, in this case? So, it's, no. it's always everything here based on your case. You uh -huh. can use it or you can... I can't limit what to do. I have to have it. Compress it. Okay. From the um, user uh, experience perspective, do you recommend using lazy components in React, for example? Mm -hmm. So we have two options, pre-compile everything, or um, as we are not using all of those, for some specific page, uh, we can use lazy, but we then create multiple network requests. Definitely. Yeah, using so lazy, but definitely. So using lazy, it's, a, it's yes. good, yeah. Okay. Yes. Exactly. Um, any kind of uh, screen issues while it's actually loading? No? So for, for lazy, no, because you are, leading, you are loading this based on your request. So it will not that much problem for you. Okay. Do you recommend using um, packing, packing SVGs as React components? Packing SVG, SVGs, it's the most amazing in SVG is the scalability. Yeah. So this is the, the, the main characteristic of SVG because we use it mainly for graphics and sometimes for game designing. So you can use it normally because finally it's text. We have and you can several thousand it. icons in SVG. So. Um, my question is, uh, is it good to have them packed as React components and render it on a screen, mm -hmm. uh, all, all icons in one chunk? Or should we go with React SVG approach uh, that can still have several or multiple network requests for each application? It's based on how frequently you update. This is first. But if you, it's already if it's static, you can batch it as a whole. Okay. Using in one, one file and you can show it. And also CSS have inheritance properties. So you can have it in one CSS and you can inherit this like it will be provided like classes. Yeah. Same like the concept of encoding the image like uh, BNG or GBG as a base 46. You will not see the content, it just encoded, but you reference and the CSS are able, is able to translate it to image. So you can Exit because sometimes for gaming I can't do this. I'm, I will wait for requests. I have to because I'm changing the character or changing the, the background based on. So I will heavily rely on on network. In this way, when I design the application, I will design that I have to use higher bandwidth network to serve me. If it's static, 
one batch, it would be much easier because it would be cached also. Mm -hmm. Okay, even though it's pretty big, right? Yes. Okay. Because it will finally it will be cached on your client side. Uh, yeah, okay. It's automatically, it's not you, because images and resources automatically cached if it's not updated, because this yeah, is yeah, normal yeah. behavior of the browsers. You just only cache data if you have it like uh, cities, whenever it is. This is you are responsible for caching because it's not cached. But for resources like JavaScript, CSS, and images, it's cached by default in your local browser cache. This is why when you clear history and the local cache, your browser, everything is gone. When you make a new request, it will ask for everything to come back again. But you will find that you didn't program it. It's default behavior of the browser to speed up loading of the page. Uh -huh. Okay, and my last question regarding your presentation, you mentioned... It's on Docker. GitHub. Yeah, uh, you mentioned Docker, Docker, how it's related to UI, actually. So. Because nowadays we are, we are separate. Sometimes you build your UI service using Node.js, using your front end uh, a page statically, and you are, would like to put it on website and running inside Node service, Node.js. So we're separating. It's not inside my back end, just we communicating through REST API. Yeah. So it's not related? To your for UI, UI, no. It's no. just for faster deployment. If you have changes and okay. would like to yeah. batch it, Yes, you can, because in, in even Node.js uh, as a service, we have libraries to use, like Express. We use some libraries in Node.js, a new, uh, I'm sorry, like Angular, React, a new libraries we use. So we can cache all of this as a layer and just we updating our page or two pages to find us to be very thin layer, which is I can really faster deploy it. Mm -hmm. Okay, and thanks. Faster. Yep, That's thanks. It. Any other questions? Thank you for the presentation. Uh, at the beginning of the presentation, you noticed about Cordova framework. Mm -hmm. And how do you think? Uh, do you uh, do you have any experience, positive or maybe negative, with it? And I, how do you think? Is it uh, still alive? I didn't use it for a long time, but I use it for developing one application and an Egypt back for the government. And because when I go to hybrid solution. It, it's taken based on many decisions. Shortage of resources, because I don't have these people experience in my, my company now doing iOS and Android, but I need to bring something faster. I don't know which platform I'm going to run, either it's Android or iOS, but I need to come up with something that, when you take a decision as a vendor and da da da, yes, I can compile it and drive it. Either it's even Microsoft based. This is why we go for hybrid solution. But I didn't have any big problem because finally I felt that I have to be just web developer, not front end normally, but I will be in touch with the architecture, how I can deploy mobile application. Just build it, but not inside. But you have to get in touch in the, each architecture because you are going to use Mac for just building. You are going to use Android emulator and simulator, but finally for development, HTML, CSS, and it's great for you, a rapper, and APK or IPA, finally, for you. Because I remember but, a lot of problems with this. Yeah, they have before, but I don't know now, but most of the people now using React, using Angular too, and there is a lot of frameworks for, for mobile become ready, and they use Cordova. Nobody, Cordova was the proof of concept from two or three years ago, but most all of these Companies build up and, and provide you a robust way. Flutter do this also. We have JavaFX, we can, from Gluon, we can use JavaFX to build mobile. Your application, by the way, that you use for accessing uh, uh, um, Devox Ukraine, uh, this is JavaFX. It, and uh, the yes. UI, UI experience. Some VR, yes. Your experience is very bad. It's, I'm giving you the options, but the best is yes, you can go native and you can have hybrid. React is very fast and give you really uh, like very l a high look and feel to seem like native exactly and even the performance. Any other questions? I'm happy to hear your questions really, so it means 
there is some people uh, get thank you benefit. for your presentation mm, i have questions uh, mm, Mm, how mm, what best way uh, mm, to change version uh, mm, cache it uh, uh, front end mm, on change uh, mm, uh, back end? Uh, can you repeat the question again? Uh, when I mean, no, uh, no, I understand. Uh, cache it front end old version and back end uh, deploy new version. Okay. Uh, uh, mm, how to Maintain the compatibility? Uh, 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 not only backend and static file too. Uh, you mean that this kind of. Uh, w mm. We developed something and mm. I would like to deliver it to you as a backend and. Mm. It depends because when you. Front end mainly now we, when we're using React no, and oh, Angular. Old front end cache it. Uh, For mm. me as a backend, I will never provide anything. Only mm. the contact point between us is the URL and the data contract. Mm. That's it. Because uh, um, the front end, I'm sorry if I'm interrupting you, front end is responsible with the other designers for CS, CSS, JavaScript development, and even the structure and everything. Just I'm um, asking you as a back end, I need this data. What is the structure of this data? And which URLs? That this is between us. This is how we maintain it. So this is why I called you many times now, because we are distributed teams, we separate front end engineering, and I'm running the page, calling even sometimes we use one SPG, SBA page, and put it on S3, Amazon S3, mm -hmm. because it's static, calling your back end and using that page with the framework, it just changed doing everything. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you.